Here we go. Behind you. The joke's on you. This will be fun. Now you see me. Now you don't. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna show you how to play Shaco today. Uh, so first of all, you want to start with your W and you're going to place the first box at 50 seconds at the spot where I'm pinging right now. Uh, the boxes are going to fear and they also do damage. So that's like your main way of um, clearing out the jungle camps with. So you're gonna place the first box at exactly 50 seconds and then you just place the remaining boxes at cooldown. So the second one is going to be right here. Uh, so place that down. And now you're going to place the third one um, at the Grump. A little bit in front of it so it doesn't get popped immediately, but it's going to do so afterwards. So just wait for the cooldown. And then once you did that, you're going to go for the blue buff and then we want to finish that off first. Also, um, Sheikos passive backstab means that you deal bonus damage when you hit people from the back so always do that when you clear out jungle camps but also when you damage enemy champions and now you got your Q which is a blink that makes you invisible you're gonna blink behind the grump here um, actually uh, place that last box a bit wrong because like you need to place it behind the grump so it ends up pushing the grump into the um, other box you placed but it didn't hurt that much it's okay so now you're gonna Q behind the wolves and then you place down another box here and then con constantly backstab um, the big wolf focus that down and then once they're low HP you're gonna place down another box that's going to clear them out and then you can just go towards the other camp because that box is going to take care of it and then you just peace out and now you can either take your E level 3 that's if you're going to gank uh, but if you are going to just AFK cling then you can also put another point into your box so your Q empowers your next um, attack on the enemy as well and your E is like a passively it makes it so when this ability is off cooldown so when it is ready to use then it's going to make it so your auto attack slows the opponent but when you use it then you lose this passive that slows but then that actor will slow people and also deal bonus damage and also this also benefits from that backstab, uh, backstab um, bonus uh, making it deal more damage to uh, low HP targets. Same thing right here so you're gonna place down a box when these medium um, monsters are low HP and then you just peace out the box is gonna take care of it and that is it how you clear. Um, we start at blue side because you often get invaded at red side and people usually take out your boxes and that's gonna mess up your clear so that's why it's a lot safer to start out blue side. I'm gonna take down this Yasuo. And of course he already had a shot down because he just double killed my bot lane. Somehow that I don't know why but we took down that shutdown so that's cool. Now we're gonna base here and we're gonna get the Berserkers. That's gonna help with the clear. This also helps with the mobility. So you can get to other parts of the map a lot faster. And the attack speed is of course also really really nice. So backstabbing is really really important on Shaco. Um, your Q benefits from it and your E benefits from it as well and also your auto attack. So it's really really important that not only for the clearing but also for when you want to gank and stuff always like come in from the behind. And the skill um, sequence here, um, so you max out your E but you always want to start off by putting 3 points into your W first. The reason for that is because you want to make sure that your W deals enough damage so it can consistently work as your jungle clear. So this is a bit brutal right here but this is what I like to do as a jungle. I perma camp a lane especially if it's a Yasuo lane because they play way too aggressive and that is what I like to abuse a lot so you can see picked up another free kill. So that's awesome and then you can just head into the enemy jungle if there are no camps left to clear. You can also go for the drake, but if it's super early on in the game, then you would like to have some assistance from your bot lane or the mid laner. Try to backstab as much as possible. You can hear this different sound animation when you backstab so you know that it's actually going off.
So we got that dragon for free. That's cool of course. I'm always focused on the objectives. Um, so it's really nice that we were able to do that as well. Now our bot lane has to chill a bit here because um, they did get double kills so I don't really trust them so that's why this game I'm gonna perma camp the bottom side. The way clang or jungle clang is pretty easy on Chaco um, as long as you place the boxes right so just have to follow what I did and that's going to be pretty simple especially if you start blue side uh, which is the easiest, easiest side to clear. Just backstab, backstab, backstab. Now we're gonna put the last point into the W and now we start maxing out the E. So now we have enough damage in the W for it to like um, easily clear out the camps with. Going with a Q here. And then don't use your E immediately guys. Uh, because you want your auto attacks to slow as much as possible and also because your E deals like bonus damage to low HP target. So you want to like keep it for as long as possible before you use it. So you can abuse the perma slow on your auto attacks, but also that bonus damage on low HP targets. So burst them down first and also your box the fear is going to make it so the skull crab loses that shield. So that also makes it really easy for us to take that down. Just gonna smite the blue here. We have not used that many smites right here. I was being a bit greedy with it. But that's gonna allow us to hit level 6, clearing out this blue buff right here. So what that ultimate does is that it's going to make you disappear for a short duration and then you're gonna spawn with a clone that you can control with the um, alt or ultimate button. And when that clone can also auto attack and that also uh, benefits your passive. And when that clone dies, then it's going to like fear surrounding enemies and also deal damage because it's going to like spawn boxes. Another thing here is that um, if you're standing close to a wall and you press your ultimate and click on the other side of the wall, then you're going to teleport to that side. And then you're going to switch places with your clone. So it's very good for like deceiving your opponents. That clone can be used to like for extra damage. It can also be used to like um, to take down objectives like the dragon and stuff. So it's really, really fun to use as well. And if you use it properly, then it can be pretty hard to guess like which one is the real Shaco. Play out the rip off and then we're gonna hit bot lane once again. As I said, I am going to camp the bot lane this game because they're playing really aggressive so I know that I have free kills. You can see the Draven died. As I said, I do not trust my bot lane. That's why I'm going to camp them because if this Yasuo snowballs, it's going to be really hard. But we took down the Talia too, so this is all we gotta... Um, do here, if you see somebody playing really, really aggressive all the time, just perma camp them. But also make sure that you clear out the jungle camps in between. You can place your W um, inside your Q animation without it cancelling out the stealth. But if you use your E, then it is going to cancel it out. So do not do that. You can also use your Q inside your, uh, or your ultimate inside your Q animation. So you can use your W and your ultimate inside your Q without it cancelling out the invisibility. But if, if you use your um, E, then it is going to cancel it out. Then we'll just hit back bot lane as usual. As I said, somebody playing aggressor, you're going to camp them and you're going to pick up those free kills. Shaco is an assassin. So the more kills you can get the early on, um, the higher chances of you actually carrying the game because you're going to start one-shotting people. There's a really nice cue by the Lux and you can see that clone when it dies is going to fear people. And this does not deal that much damage on the AD, AD Shaco but if you go AP that's going to hit like a nuke. Backstab, backstab, backstab on every single jungle camp and also enemy champion so you can clear out a lot faster. Took down the blue buff and then we're gonna peace out. Hitting bot lane for a counter gank because we know the cane is going to come. Just waiting a bit here. So 
about Borderlands took down the Yasuo, which is nice, and we see the cane as expected. Um, this stuff, you know, if you uh, learn how to uh, track the enemy jungler, that is something that is going to come with experience, but if you're able to do that, you'll be able to counter gang a lot, and that is really going to help out your team. And now we can go for another Drake. Backstab all the time, also the big monster camps, that is really going to increase your DPS bar a lot. And also, if you backstab during your Q, um, it's going to make it so you get a guaranteed crit. So basically, you don't need to like build full crit on Chaco, so even if you only have an Infinity Edge, you're still going to benefit, benefit from that um, empowered um, crit auto attack as long as you Q and then backstab. Setting on a lot of gold here, so for the mythic item, um, so Dustblade is not something you buy very often on AD Assassins, but Shaco especially benefits from that a lot, because you really need that invisibility passive, um, because when you go in as Shaco, you use everything you have, so you really struggle disengaging, but that's where the Dustblade passive comes in. Get a kill on somebody, and you can then you can use that. Um, invisibility to disengage will, or you can use that to like reposition yourself for the next engage. And then of course you also get ability haste, which is also really really nice to have, um, especially on Shaco. Once again, camping the bottom side, you see somebody playing really aggressive. Um, that is always the case with Yasuo players, you can just perma cam them and pick up free kills. Also the good thing here is that your Q is a blink, it is not a dash, meaning that Talia's E is not going to stun you. And that is another free kill on the Yasuo. Playing way too aggressive, they always do that guys, so Yasuo is always an easy gank. Plus, even though I play Yasuo a lot myself, it's still really satisfying to see Yasuo players die. <laughs> so, they also tilt hard, so if you camp somebody, especially in solo queue, not only Yasuo players, but like in general, if you camp somebody all the time, they're gonna tilt really hard. So if you want the free win, that is of course also an option, but do not forget to clear out the jungle camps, otherwise you are going to fall behind XP wise. I'll place down the box in the middle right here, because then if the cane or somebody else comes, then they can like CC them. For a short duration, so I can like, clear out the camp and then peace out. Um, okay, that was way too close for comfort, but we'll take it, we'll take it. They got the kill, so... That's cool. And that's a cane right here. Volibear finishing that guy off with an ultimate, that's cool, as long as we get the kill and the takedown. So we are playing against the Yorick top lane, which is extremely annoying, um, really difficult to gank and also really annoying to play against that AFK speed pushing playstyle. No one likes to play against that, but we have to like um, answer it somehow. Um, he's really hard to gank of course. So we need to be like 2 versus 1 when we take him down. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult. I'm just going to take out his ultimate right here so he cannot spit push as easily. We got the flash down, so we at least got something out. Also, you like W, um, the boxes, they scale with AP. So if you play AP Shaco, they're going to deal a ton of damage, especially late on in the game. So on AD Shaco, it's mostly used to like clear out the jungle camps with and then as CC for the fear. But on AP Shaco, you also use it as damage on the enemy champions, and that is a lot of damage. So yeah, um, Brother Draven running it down as usual. That's why I'm telling you guys, I do not trust these players, that's why I'm camping them a lot. So at this point, they should actually be winning and really hard, but they're still losing somehow, so that's why I just consistently um, play around the bottom side. And also, our Wally Bear died so much in the top lane that he just refused to lane top anymore, so luckily we have Heimer 
Going top side, but he's still going to struggle because this is going to be a Hullbreaker Yorick, and AP champions really struggle dealing with that. But well, you picked up free kill, took down the skull crab, and then we can look for a gank mid. Also, your ultimate guys. Um, of course, that clone is going to appear, but really good shaker players also use it to like dodge incoming uh, damage, like incoming ultimates, incoming skill shots, and stuff, because it makes you disappear for a while. So not only use it to like get extra damage. But also use that ultimate to like dodge really important damaging abilities coming in. And that is something really good shaker players do all the time. We're gonna do the Drake once again here, that's going to be the third one. I am really focusing down objects a lot when I play jungle and that's something you should also aiming to do. Took down the Drake, awesome, setting on a lot of gold. I'm going for the Sheen here because we are going for a one-shot build and Essence Reaver, you get to benefit uh, from that Sheen passive a lot, which does help you a lot with that burst damage. So Essence Reaver is a really, really good item to buy on Shaco as well, if you play for the one-shot build. And one-shot build is the most fun. AP Shaco is also really fun. Yeah, unfortunately I ended up dying here, but what I could have done here is that if I um, hold the cursor on the other side of the wall and then ultimate it, use the ultimate, then I would have appeared on the other side of the wall, then maybe I could have survived. It's only a maybe though, but there are always like ways for you to play it differently. So always like look at your replays and see what you could have done better. Got the Essence Reaver though, so that's another Massive boost to our damage, and now we're gonna go for the Collector, giving us Lethality, also Crit, and also that um, Executing Passive, which all helps us being that ultimate AD Assassin. So people are getting dumpstered around the map. Unfortunately, this is one of those super hard games that we just have to carry by ourselves. So we have to step it up right here, and you want to go for the squishy targets because you're playing an AD assassin, meaning that you don't go for the front line. You want to like wait in the corners and then wait for somebody to extend. You queue behind them. You can place down a box towards the direction they'll be escaping towards. And then just backstab, 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 and then use E at the end. That was way too close for comfort once again, but that Yasuo went down, so we are satisfied. But luckily, we did not end up dying. So you can just go back to Klang. Uh, if you're low HP, you can just smite the camps. But usually, you do want to keep it for those 1 vs 1s because of the red smite, making your 1 vs 1 a lot stronger. Just constantly hover around your teammates, and if there's a squishy target who wants to like go to the side lane to farm, then you can just cam and wait for them to appear, and then you take them down, and you'll get out, and then you just repeat. You have to be really obnoxious, like you have to make people really hate you when you play Shaco. That's the entire point of playing this champion, so try to like be as annoying as possible. So everywhere you see a big minion wave for the enemy to take, you just camp next to it, somebody's going to appear, you kill them, you take the wave, and you peace out. People are getting real tilted at this game um, because they're dying around the map, which blows a lot. And this Raven is also somehow 3 and 6 despite us camming, uh, but that's like the typical solo queue game. People get insanely tilted, and somehow, or most of the time, you're going to end up losing these games, but sometimes you'll be able to carry, so do. Keep trying, especially if you play in lower elos, because people will be overextended a lot. Bot lane doing great. So we do have a lot of AP on our team, because Volibear decided to uh, go AP, and now we have a Draven running it down. He just sold all of his items, so that is the typical Draven player. He loses it uh, by himself and then he gets tilted and now they just run it down. 
So now we have to play 4 versus 6. Let's see if we can carry this, guys. Let's go for it. He was useless anyways because he just kept dying, even though we camped him so much, so... Now it is a 4 versus 5. So we gotta see what we can do. So Yorick and tanky champions are really difficult for Sheiko to deal with guys, so you don't want to pick him against a very tanky team composition, unless you're going for the AP Sheiko where you can build stuff like the Devonic Embrace and Lion Riz. AD Sheiko, especially Assassin Sheiko is something you want to build or use against a squishy team composition, so at least they have like 1-2 carries on the team, that's why you can go for it. Also like AD Sheko, the assassin one is really difficult to play because you just get one shot by everything, like legit everything on the map. You are so so squishy so you cannot afford to make mistakes. If you do, you're gonna die, just like I did right here. So you have to be really careful and you also have to like know your exact damage output so you can take somebody down and then you can get out with the dustway passive. If you don't get to proc that dustway passive, you're gonna die the moment you go in. So Brother Draven doing what he does best, selling all, all of his items and then just running it down on cooldown. That of course blows but it's kind of expected. But that was a really nice deal by the locks, meaning that we got the soul right now. It's of course not the best soul, it's still okay but something like the infernal one would have been really nice to have or the one that gives you sustain because you don't have any sustain in uh, Sheiko's kit. Also another really cool thing you can do with the boxes is that you can also just place them down to like dodge incoming skill shots like this um, Estra's Q. And Raven just speedrunning in Berlin, that's cool. He really wants us to lose. I'm not quite sure why he's mad. I think it's because he like he died uh, so much despite us camming his lane so now he's just tilted. Um, he probably think he lost because of the locks or something and then he just runs it down. But that's Smurf Q for you, uh, probably diamond players in Smurf Q because they do this a lot. For no reason. Look at how I kite around when I'm low HP. I constantly make sure there's like a gap between us so you can like never get to use abilities on me or auto attack me. And then I kite with the E and the W. We are going for the armor pin item here because people will be starting to build armor, uh, armor items. Yasuo is going for the death stance and Yorick is pretty tanky. So uh, Lord Dominix is becoming really important right here so that's important we have this. And Italia flies over. Luckily the Volibear took down the cane so that's cool. And another flash down on the Ezreal. You can also like Q in and then just E people just to slow them. Um, something you can do if you have teammates who can like follow up on it, like the Lux Q. Or L style Leona or something, that's also fine. But the moment you use your Q in, you don't have any disengage besides your ultimate, so do be careful. That's why Dustblade is so important on AD Shaco, because you have that invisibility upon takedown, so you can use that to reposition. just con um, continue clearing out the jungle camps so the problem here is that because the draven keeps running it down the opponents are going to get a bigger xp lead over us even more important that we actually get some gold for ourselves and xp too yasuo doing yasuo things that's of course ends up benefiting us a lot because that's gonna buy ourselves some time because at this point the opponents could actually be going for the Baron.
Look at how I'm positioning guys. Um, I'm coming in from the sides and then I make sure that somebody low HP is not going to escape. Playing like a real assassin, that's how you want to do it. And that is also what allowed me to take down the Yorick and his TP too. Come from the sides where people do not expect you to come from. Because then you will be able to pull off stuff like this. Because if Yorick saw me right here, he would not be going for the TP. Almost level 16, that's gonna be huge, because that's going to be the last point into that ultimate, which is of course really nice. That does it so the cooldown is a lot lower, and then you also deal more damage with it. Which of course benefits the AP Shaco the most, but it's still nice having um, another point into that ultimate, because then you can use it more often. So I'm just trying to group all my teammates, uh, because if we a ram it, then maybe we might be able to find kills. If we just let them pick up Raven over and over, then they're gonna get a pretty big advantage over us. Right now it's 30 kills to 29, but of course they... Because we have the drakes, then we are okay off, but if we did not go for the objective early on, then this game would have been really, really, really difficult. Got the Lord Dominix at this point, because they have some armor that we need to deal with. And then the last item is going to be the Infinity Edge for that maximum DPS boost. So just staying mid lane, uh, because people will get caught all the time in solo queue, so I try to like hover close to them. Um, so if do, they do get caught, or um, if they engage, then I can be ready. And that is a very important skill you have to master in solo queue. Because people will always get caught somehow, uh, even if you are ahead, they will always get caught, so you have to be prepared for it. So if that's something you can be prepared for most of your games, then you're gonna climb really fast. Now we can go for the Elder Drake. Um, Israel is pushing topside. Which is difficult to deal with because you're playing 4 versus 5. But we did secure the Elder Drake, which is absolutely insane. This is so crucial because the, if the enemy team got this one, we're gonna suffer so much. Place down a box here in case somebody tries to um, engage. And just like that, that guy got absolutely demolished. That's why even if I recall, I make sure I place like a box close to me. So if somebody does try to engage on onto me, then I at least have that for CC. I have like a way to uh, re-engage onto the opponent or I can just escape. And then I also use that clone um, to like block out his skill shot so I'll be pretty safe but that was a really nice outplay. And that is the burst damage you have on the AD Shaco. Um, when you get your items, and also when you make sure to play him properly, meaning that you backstab. If you don't backstab, you're gonna lose out on a lot of free damage. And now we have a Yorick split pushing in the bottom side. That is a big yikes. I hate playing against that, but they just AFK split push and they don't do anything else. Especially when you play a champion, they can't really deal with it. Well, they are dead, but they are also dead, so... 2 versus 1 for now. We have to abuse that Elder Drake, um, so I want like people to group if possible, so we can like force a fight. Because as I said, it doesn't matter whether it's your teammates or the opponents, they will always 
get caught and if you are prepared then you can abuse it especially when you do have the elder drake Hammer Dinger got caught, but the locks got a kill. 2 for 2, we'll take it, we'll take it, and now we have enough gold for the Infinity Edge, that's going to be the final power spike on Shaco. So every single squishy you meet, you should be able to one-shot them as long as you backstab. The problem though is that if they survive, you're gonna die because you don't have any more damage left after that, so you really have to make sure that you can actually one-shot people when you go in. Because something like a cane, he's going to um, demolish you with a single combo. Like he's gonna insta one shot you. Your one shotting is a bit delayed because you had to like reposition yourself behind the opponent and line them up. But Kane can just go in the moment he sees you, and if you get hit by his W, then you're dead. Because you're gonna be so low HP that he just ults you, and bam, you're gone. And you see what I said just earlier, you get hit by a W, you lose almost all of your HP and then he's gonna ult you and it does not matter if you ult because he's still going to um, damage the original Shaco and bam you are dead. W ultimate and you just gonna disappear like that so that's why I'm telling you guys if you play AD Assassin Shaco, the one shot Shaco, do be really careful with your positioning because you cannot afford to make mistakes. Not even if you are as fat as I am right now. Because at this point in the game, people already have the items, so your lead is not as big as you want it to be. So be extremely, extremely careful. Man, this Lux is doing really well, so that's really lucky for us. Kind of making up for the Draven just speedrunning it. And we also have the Heimerdinger pressuring in the sideline, so they cannot just AFK push a lane and take out our towers. We can see we are holding up pretty well considering the fact that we are 4 vs um, 6 because the Draven is speedrunning it. He sold all of his items and just runs it down. Um, so that's definitely possible to win some of these games. As long as the rest of your teammates are playing pretty decent. They don't have to be insanely good, but as long as they play it alright, then you actually have a chance. That is Satch, Luxtite, Rebronis. I'm always, always going in from the behind guys and sometimes you do end up dying because you don't have enough damage. But try to like position your clone so even if you die, um, they are still within range of your clone so that, like they end up getting feared. Because that can actually help your teammates out a lot, especially if that is AP Shaco. Because then they also have to respect the damage because it can actually one shot people. Like the damage of the AP Shaco with that clone, that is insane DPS. So I did make another mistake that of course is in going to end up costing me and our teammates a lot and they will most likely also be taking down the Elder Drake so that's also another really difficult thing to deal with. Now you can't really do anything else besides buying the red pot. Um, what you could do here is that if you do end up getting one shot and you do end up dying a lot with full build, you can sell um, some of your items to get Guardian Angel or the Death Sands. Um, you could sell the Collector um, to get a Guardian Angel for some extra safety. Or the Death Sands too, which also works. That's also possible, but I'm gonna be really greedy here so I can keep the damage and hopefully we can find a couple kills.
That's actually really nice also by me because um, the Yasuo decided to ult us and he killed the clone first. That means that, uh, meant that he got feared and he died. Look at how I'm positioning always from the sides. And if somebody's low HP, I make sure to finish them off. That's a very important thing you have to do on Assassins. You have to be really good at clearing up. I'm being really careful here because if I queue in, I'm gonna die. I just kite him around. Because the Lux also has to defend the base and also top lane, top lane minions attacking our tower that we also have to clear out. Whenever you queue in, do make sure that you can actually kill the target. Because if you're not able to do that at this point in the game, they're gonna kill you. Like, you're gonna die. Now our win condition right here is if we're able to force a good fight, we have to take down the Baron and then we have to Aram admit. Uh, because Shorik wants to be AFK split pushing and if we let him do that, that's going to be insanely difficult to deal with. To see how you can assassinate, combine your ultimate with your Q, so when you come out of vision and they see that clone, they're going to think that's the original one. They're gonna kill it, they're gonna get feared, and that's gonna allow you to get away. That was way too close for comfort, but we made it out. We got the Estrel, so they cannot take down the Baron as easily. That's an annoying TP from the Yorick, but luckily my teammates are responding to it. And we have a Heimerdinger pressuring the bottom side, so they also had to react. That's nice. I had to get out here because I the cane if he ults me, like if you ever let him ult you, you're gonna die. I just said the W box on top of him when he came out of the GA and then I peaced out, my teammates dealt with it, and now we can go for the Baron. This is the one chance we got to like turn around the game because like we almost lost our entire base. We don't have a tower mid lane and the inhibitors down bot lane as well. So this Baron is the thing that has to help us like um win the game and close it out. I'm gonna take out his ultimate here so he cannot split push as easily. But man, these ghouls are really annoying. Just look at that damage they're dealing. Really, really annoying to deal with. I'm gonna clear out another wave here, but also I have to watch out for the Israel ultimate because it's gonna one shot me. That is AP Israel. Can't do anything else besides buying the red pot because I am full build. As I said, you can sell the collector and get something like a guardian angel or the death stance that is going to make the fights a lot more safer for you. And it might also end up um, making you survive for when Kane tries to one shot you. But I'm going for the full damage build because I want to be able to one shot all the time. And I ended up making another big mistake, which is really unfortunate. That really sucks a lot. Because we really needed to abuse this opportunity we got, but I got caught, unfortunately. So my teammates have to play it safe now. They have to wait for me to respawn. Otherwise, it's pretty doomed. We have to pray they can actually hold it out. If they cannot, it's tedious. Man, I swear this Lux is such a savior, man. So many times she managed to finish off uh, people running away so they don't survive. Because if they do, that would have been really bad for us, but we are back in action and they managed to hold it out. We have to go for round two.
I could have clicked that ultimate outside of his um, cage range, so I would appear outside of it. That's a mistake. That's something you can um, remember to do. I'm gonna flank here. Because that is how you pick up these skills. And now a really clean Q towards the other side of the bush so I could take down the Israel. This stuff you had to become so good at. You had to become so good at predicting where the opponent will be when they try to reset. And where they will be escaping towards because if you can do that then you can pull off stuff like this. I just got a double kill for free. Just because I was able to do that. So if you can do that as well, that is really going to allow you to win a lot of games. And we want to do the Elder Drake right here but the cane is alive. That's the problem. So we need more people to come uh, to help us out but luckily we see him topside so that means a free Elder Drake that is the second one we get this game so now is the time to shine because if you don't close it out right now they're just gonna run us down because we are playing 4 versus 5 because the Draven um, stopped caring about the game and just want his team to lose But the Elder Drake is the really nice uh, one to have because that is the guaranteed one shot now. We just have to wait for somebody to extend and then we take them down. And we are going to one shot them unless they use something like a Sonya's because we have the Elder buff so we have to abuse it. We really have to abuse it. The Draven sold some of his troll items and bought some tank items, I guess. He's not going to be useful, but at least he's going to survive for a bit longer. But this game just goes to show just how useless he has been like the entire game. Even in the early game where I actually camped him and made sure that he could win lane. Nice engaged by the locks, he's gonna be feared. I just used the clone because I don't want to risk dying right now. That's going to cost us a lot. Went in and slowed it all here, so I walled back and engage. Oh yeah, it's down, so now we have to go for the push. Now is the time. This has to be the final push because if you don't end it here, guys, it's going to be doomed. They're going to end the game because we don't have a base left. People flank flanking from all sides. Got the cane, but got bursted down by the AP Israel. Really unfortunate. So now we have to pray that our teammates can end it. Honestly, this Lux has done so well. Like this Lux and Volbear, and also the Heimerdinger. Actually, they have been playing so well. So we can actually win the game right now because they uh, managed to save it. So that was how to play Shaco. This was a really good game demonstrating how you had to play at different parts of the game. But thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. As always, see you guys in the next one.